The U.S. Army Green Berets and some other special operations units have been testing this system for the last six months, and it may just replace all their pistols. The new Flux Raider is now being tested by 19 Special Forces Group, but what is all the hype about? And is this a viable option for a secondary? All right, guys, before we get started, don't forget to go on the Two Alpha Training Group and sign up for our newsletter. That's where you'll be up to date on all the courses, events, collaborations, and products, other merch and stuff that we're coming out with. You want to definitely sign up for that. Plus, we don't spam you. We only send it out like once or twice a month, so we don't bore you with that stuff. Otherwise, pause, hit that subscribe button right now, and join our community. Help us grow this YouTube page, and also just help us bring you guys more content like this. So since October of 2023, Green Berets at 19 Special Forces Group have been testing the Flux Raider to see if this is a PDW style weapon platform that they can carry. Essentially, what the Green Berets want is something to replace their pistol, but also give them some kind of increased capability where they have almost a PDW style submachine gun without the heavy weight of a submachine gun, but also the proprietary components and parts that come with a submachine gun. As you notice in these headlines that not only Green Berets are testing these systems now, but it's rumored that Navy SEALs, SEAL Team 6, and some other components from Special Operations Command are now testing the Flux Raider to see if this is something that they can use or if there's a variation of it that would make sense to their application. So from these articles, I've kind of made some notes of what the Flux Raider is and uh, breaking it down for you guys. So let's cover these one by one. Design and function. The Flux Raider is basically a conversion kit for the 6-hour P320 that turns the pistol into basically a, a short barrel rifle or a submachine gun PDW style weapon with a buttstock, a forward grip, a place for an optic, and you have two magazines there. Also, you have an accessory rail that you can attach IR lights or lasers to. What this does in function is really just give the end user increased stability through that buttstock, also re recoil mitigation because of that buttstock and the forward grip, but also an increase in accuracy just because now you're using two hands and you're shouldering this weapon, plus you have a nice red dot on top. All right guys, so this is actually gonna be my first time shooting this gun, so I thought, let me start with a slow fire drill, like a 25 yard, 10 shot kind of NRA on an IPSC target. Again, slow fire because I wanna see what kind of impulses I'm getting from this gun, how much muzzle rise am I getting, what kind of recoil am I, am I feeling back here in my shoulder, and what, is that, what does that mean to my support hand, how much work am I doing there, right? And really just having a 193 mount and how kind of that, where I need to kind of, you know, give my head in order to make it make sense to the optics. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one out. Compatibility, well, it's easy. It just uses six hour P320 uh, FCUs or fire control units uh, and their magazines. And if you're familiar with the weapon system, then the continuity is there. Plus, it's just easy maintenance and logistics. Three, two, six. When it comes to customization, the Flux Raider does accommodate a bunch of different kind of customizable points from barrel lengths to forward grips to the rear grips to accessory rails and other kind of adapters for other optics or, or lasers or IR lights. Portability. Well, it's a sm small profile, that's for sure. You can definitely conceal carry this Flux Raider underneath a heavy jacket or a raincoat or something like that. You can throw it in a backpack very easily and conceal carry it or use it for low vis applications. Training and familiarity. Well, if you have shot a SIG P320 or a SIG Sauer kind of striker fired gun before and you shot some ARs in your time, between the two, there is some continuity in the features and function. 
and some of the manual arms is a little bit weird at times at the beginning I should say but it is intuitive and it just takes a little bit of getting used to to kind of get used to the buttons and features on the flux radar itself now this may not be the exact variation or model that special operations units or the green berets are going to use but I promise you it's going to be some variation of this it may be longer barrels it may be different butt stocks different lights maybe some lasers or whatever on the side but there's also modifications being done from Flux themselves to see if they can accommodate some of their end users, really to some of the components in SOCOM that want these, that are testing these. They're trying to kind of see if there's different little modifications, customizations they can make to accommodate those units. So I'm sure that we're going to see some different versions of this Flux Raider come out very soon, at least on the mill side. Now, as you can see, the way I have mine configured may not be the same as what the ODAs will configure theirs. Otherwise, Mine is more set up for a civilian kind of application. I don't have any lasers or pressure pads on here. I have an X, X300 from Surefire with a, uh, uh, with a Hollow Sun 503 sitting on a 193 ScholarWorks mount. And that's about the extent of it for me. I will get the side railings at some point so I can attach a laser and a pressure pad. But the way the ODAs have their setup right now is with some side railings where they have attached their lasers for passive shooting under night vision and stuff like that. Uh, but again, you can figure this to what, to what would make sense to you guys and not so much how the ODAs are carrying it, but really how you need to carry it, whether it's a concealed carry weapon in, your, in your, one of your bags or whether you keep this as a PDW underneath a garment. Uh, there's different applications obviously for this, or maybe this is your truck gun. Um, and so this, again, it has to make sense to you. The configuration of it also needs to make sense to you. That's why I only put a hollow sun and a surefire on here because, well, I'm not really doing anything with nods and passive shooting. So, like I said, now it's rumored that we have Navy SEAL units, maybe SEAL Team 6, and maybe some other SOCOM components that are testing the flux to see if they want it as well. SEAL Team 6 did mention that they're kind of tired of MP7s. I mean, who's tired of MP7s? Get, you can give me all your MP7s. However, for them, it makes sense because, again, they want, to, they want continuity. They don't want a proprietary kind of component that now they have to have extra mags for or different parts for in case something goes wrong. With the Flux Raider, they're just grabbing their P320 mags off their range belts and off they go. So that, to me, also sounds like something I would want. MP7 is amazing and MP5s are amazing, but again, they're heavy and there's a lot of proprietary components there that now you have to pack for. So that would make sense for SEAL Team 6 and anybody else that uses MP7s. So does the Flux Raider check all the boxes? Does it check even most of the boxes? Well, does it check the box for a concealed carry? I think so. It breaks down pretty small. I mean, it's almost the size of a full-size pistol and then some, but can it fit in most of your backpacks? Absolutely. What about a PDW? What about a personal defense weapon? Could this be something that you carry daily? Well, yes, you could if you have kind of the right garments to conceal it. Otherwise, in the hot summer, you're not going to conceal this under a t-shirt. Plus, how are you going to carry it? What about lasers and passive shooting under nods? Absolutely. As you, can, as you saw from the photos, the special operations units are putting their uh, lasers on there. I will try to put a laser on this as well at some point and we'll definitely get some footage of me shooting this passive under nods. I really don't see a difference for performance or function, uh, but otherwise I do see a huge advantage in a small package. All right, we've already kind of talked about some of the pros and cons, but what are some other cons that we're not thinking about? What about just the fundamentals of pistol marksmanship? Let's just say that every special operations unit goes to a flux raider. What happens to shooting with pistol? What happens to shooting just traditional pistol at that point? Do we just completely go away from that? Do we start kind of dropping the standards because it becomes this obsolete thing? I'm kind of curious, or do we just keep them and continue to shoot pistol even though in combat we're not really carrying those pistols anymore? We're going to carry something like the Flux Raider. Interesting food for thought. Also, there has been some reports of cycling issues with these Flux Raiders. As you can see, we got a few light strikes here. Most people don't want to shoot these again, but since we're experimenting, we're going to shoot all five of these light strikes and see if we can get any of them to actually go off. Okay, so four out of five. And you can see the two indents. You see the two indents in there? Yeah. 
the two strikes on there. All right, so four out of five is not bad when we shot basically five rounds that I already, with the, with the primer already struck. We loaded those five rounds back in there. Four out of five shot, so very possibly could be the ammo, but it also could be the gun. I just don't have enough rounds to do this to tell you that yet. The fact that you guys saw on my uh, B-roll from the range that we had some, we had some not cycling issues, we had basically some primer issues. Now I'm not saying that that's the firing pin. That's probably some of my ammo because it is hod hodgepodge kind of mixed ammo. There's some older ammo there. So we'll give the Flux Raider the benefit of the doubt. But if I continue to shoot this and I continue to get more cycling issues, then I'll definitely let you, let you guys know about that in maybe a future video. Lastly, how do we retain this thing? Like, is there a holster being made for this? Is there gonna be somehow just kind of around our waist? And then how do we, you know, is, it, is there like a lanyard there? I don't, I don't understand how we're gonna carry this thing and keep it secure uh, without a sling. I would love to see some kind of hard mounted plated uh, mounting option that sits on your range belt, kind of like you see with like cameras and some other guns. Uh, that So it has that like hard connect point and you just lock it in. Maybe that's it. But then what happens to a quick transition from primary to secondary, right? So there's all these little questions and, and kind of intricacies of making this Flux Raider an, an actual secondary. Where is it positioned? How do I get to it? How does it change my mechanics, my economy of motion? And really, could it change tactics? Who knows? All right, so manual of arms. I kind of talked about it earlier and said, well, if you handle the P320 and an AR, then some of this will be intuitive and make, make sense. But it does take some getting used to. The first couple of times I shot this, my hands were all over the place touching things that I shouldn't be touching. And I, I didn't know where the mag release was. I didn't know where the mag release for this magazine was. I didn't know where anything was. And to get to these places and feel these touch points just instinctively and in the moment under pressure is, is definitely is hard on the, on the live range. But if you guys dry fire with this and really get used to all these touch points, I mean the ambi, the ambi selector switch, Everything here is so kind of compact that if you, you could accidentally hit the wrong thing thinking that you're hitting the mag release or you're hitting maybe this, you know, the slide extension or, or the, excuse me, the buttstock extension or, or, or release and you could be just hitting a piece of metal. Now try this at night with gloves on and you can tell that the difficulty will increase dramatically. So this does need a lot of dry fire time guys and then obviously go to the live to a range and kind of test all that you know with some live fire. All right so manual of arms on the flux takes some getting used to. There's a lot of buttons and features here that you need to kind of get to know. For example just this here is just an extra mag holder also kind of your forward grip but if you want to release that mag you're just going to hit it from here and notice when I hit this button it also moves that bar. Okay so that's for my extra mag but if I'm actually putting a mag into the pistol grip then I can also drop that mag using this mag release right here. Otherwise it's in there pretty good, locked in. Then you have a safety selector switch that says safe and fire. Whichever one is showing, that's pretty much where it's at. So if I put this on fire right now, pull the trigger, that's gonna, you're gonna get that, right? Now, you also have just on the slide itself, the takedown lever pin, but also the slide stop, slide catch on, on this side. On this side, you don't have much going on other than the safety selector switch. You also have this mag release button right here that'll release your main magazine in the pistol grip. So if I hit that, there goes the mag, otherwise it's seated. The only difference on this side really is just this lever right here that will pop out the buttstock. So if I kind of zoom out a little bit, there goes the buttstock, right? And if I wanted to release that, I'm just going to press back in. And it is under a lot of spring tension, so you will have to press down on there fairly, fairly hard to kind of get this buttstock back and collapse back in. But this is pretty much the manual of arms. Again, this takes a lot of getting used to with dry fire reps and just dry fire in general. You can get all these features and everything down fairly quick. All right guys, so in conclusion, having been a special forces myself, I understand what the testing kind of 
uh, period looks like for something like a flux rater. It's probably going to be a year at least. There's a lot of small questions as to how do we do this and how do we do that and what does this look like. You know, that needs to be answered, it needs to be tested, it needs to be trained and drilled to a point of perfection or a point of failure where we say, okay, we need these improvements or nope, this is good, that box is checked and now we can kind of move on. But what I think personally is that the Flux Raider does have a bright future in special operations with the teams. I see a very kind of uh, overall application for this as a secondary versus a primary, but also in low vis operations, I can see this becoming a primary with a pistol somewhere on their body as a secondary. Who knows, it could be P320s, meaning that they have all these mags now for these two systems. I think we'll see the Flux Raider more and more on the special operations side, and I think it also complements the evolution of modern warfare as we see how the world is evolving and how war and combat is going to be on a new stage, on a new playing field with a bunch of new toys, drones, I mean all kinds of kind of autonomous type of things as well. So it'll be interesting, where does the Flux Raider fit in the future of combat? All right guys, that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some information out of this that you didn't know before. But if you have questions or anything like that, go ahead and place them in the comment section down below. Again, go on to the 2Alpha Training Group website and sign up for our newsletter so you can be up to date on everything that we have to announce. We got new products on the website. We may have a new kind of t-shirt limited series thing coming out that you guys just might find pretty cool. I mean, it includes like skateboard decks and maybe some canvas art. I don't know, you guys might find it cool, but stick around, sign up for the newsletter. And also, again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are trying to grow and it's because of you guys that we can bring you stuff like this and we will see you guys next time. Cheers.